headphones on. I think we are ready to go. Welcome back to the channel. Randy, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Today, folks, we're going to be checking out the, I think it's Ravel, is the way that you pronounce it. Revel, Ravel, I'm not sure. F226BEs. Anybody know the element code for BE? What BE? Which element BE is? I'm walking around the couch because I'm giving you a minute to throw on some headphones because this is a binaural recording. This is a binaural dummy head. It is the Neumann KU100 and um, it's fantastic. So, sound clips with commentary. I'm going to give you a quick rundown. I'm not going to waste time on this. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when the next video drops. My name is Ron and I am your host. I am the bus driver of the crazy train and all of you audiophiles and hi-fi enthusiasts, well, you're the passengers and we're going to hop onto the bus and we're going to take a drive and I am going to tell you how these sound in the room. Randy is going to do the best job that he can of telling you what he hears and he does a dang good job at it but make no mistake I'm going to be telling you exactly what I hear in the room. He's just here to help us so he is our companion and uh, he can be a bit much sometimes. Get a little crazy, get a little wild, but we'll keep him under control. All right, 7,000 bucks. This is from the Performa BE line. BE is beryllium. That's right, folks. Is beryllium a big deal? Well, Randy, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, it, it is. It's three to four times stiffer than aluminum, so that's good. Um, it's also like half the weight, so we have a very light material that is incredibly stiff, and that makes it perfect for high frequencies, hence we have beryllium tweeters. What I don't know is if it's pure beryllium, meaning just beryllium. I don't know if they're just beryllium tweeters. Beryllium's pretty pricey. It's entirely possible, and we see this from time to time, that they might actually be aluminum drivers with beryllium coating. A lot of companies do that. I'm not positive. When I get to the review, I will do some fact checking. I'll ask um, Harmon. Uh, what the deal is and we'll get straight to the facts but in any event we know that beryllium is certainly being used and that's great the drivers below the tweeter that you see here this little I think it's a five and a quarter I believe it's a five and a quarter if not I'll correct myself in the video with font but that is an aluminum dome mid-range and then below that we have two I believe six and a quarter are they bigger yep they are I'll, I'll I'll correct this fonts correct me I'm an idiot all right these this is what's handling base okay so it's a three-way design tweeter mid-range woofers base duties front ported and um, they're seven thousand bucks for the pair so this is one of the higher price speakers that I've had in for review um, how do they sound? Let's find out. Let's find out, shall we? We're going to go ahead and get started with treble impressions. Throw on those headphones. Uh, binaural recordings, yeah, you can listen to it on speakers if you want to waste your time, or you can listen to me and just put on a pair of headphones because it will, it will definitely be a better experience. All right, let's get going. Trouble impressions, here we go.
really spitty hi-hat. It's not recorded all that well, and that's one of the reasons why I picked this track for treble impressions. If we, and I haven't measured these, but in the event where we have a tilted top end, uh, things are getting a little bit wild in cymbal territory, that cymbal, that spitty cymbal, sounds awful. It sounds really wonky. With the Ravels, no. It's actually, I think, a, if anything, it's actually a little bit soft. Uh, it's certainly not in your face. It's not spitty. It's not so pronounced that it's a bit of a distraction. Um, so that's good. Let's move on. this track a lot actually lots of cool atmospheric type things going on percussive little beads you know woodwinds things like that happening and um, kind of has a world music vibe which I like quite a bit um, these are said to reach 40k and that is going to be one advantage to a harder, stiffer material. I think when it comes to tweeters and top end, um, when, we're, when we're talking about, you know, soft dome tweeters, you kind of have the camp that moves in that direction because they like the sound of that material and they think that's the way to go. And then you have others that would say, no, I like a harder, stiffer material. And, you know, that's that camp. And here's the thing, it's not a matter of right or wrong, it's just what flavor of top end do you like? It's always been my experience that with most, not all, but most aluminum or stiff material drivers, beryllium as well, uh, titanium, I feel as if, I feel as if the grass is a little bit greener. And that's the best visual example that I can give to you. It's almost as, as if, you know, while you were gone on vacation, your friend was at your house and he messed around with the controls on your TV and he turned the greens up two or three notches and you sit back down and you're watching, you know, the game and you're like, huh, I don't remember the grass being so green. I feel, and this is a bit of a blanket statement, and I'm not saying this about the uh, Ravels, that sometimes with that stiffer material, aluminum, titanium, beryllium, that top end, it can just be a little bit more contrasty. It just seems like there's the satur excuse me, not contrast, saturation. It's just a little bit more colorful. With these and what I just heard on this particular track after being so long-winded is I can't say that about these so far. I actually feel like this is either A, balanced or actually a little bit relaxed on top, which is interesting. I did not expect that. It's a interesting surprise with these, but let's keep going. <laughs>
You know, acoustics, while certainly not playing crazy high or as high as you might think, I would consider them as high as upper mid-range. What I listen for is some of the decay that might be peeling off of those strings. So in the event where they use a little bit of reverb and post or maybe some kind of a delay, and make no mistake, some reverbs can actually be very low in frequency, but nonetheless, sometimes you can get some stuff popping off that sounds kind of interesting. And with this track, I do sometimes hear some of those things with some speakers more than others. And with these, I'm not really hearing it as much as I thought that I would. So what this is telling me so far about the top end characteristics about these is it might actually be surprisingly smooth. You know, I, I can't wait to shoot these, um, you know, get some measurements and see what the heck's going on. So this is really interesting, and at this point, you know, we're only a couple minutes into this, and I can tell you, without a doubt, when I go to measure these, we're gonna see, we're gonna see either a linear response on top, or we're actually gonna see a drop, um, and it's obvious. And the reason why I'm saying it is, this track, all of the top end, is exaggerated. It's actually in the recording. Everything is is hot, and on the Ravels, it actually sounds balanced. So it's it's brought what is normally hot and forward and too much, and it's kind of brought it back into balance. So I'm gonna just move on to upper mid range. I can tell you guys right now that uh, the top end of the Ravels is surprisingly smooth. It's not shouty, it's not forward, it's not edgy, it's not chalky, it's not hyped, it's not tipsy, it's not all of those bad words that you don't want me to say. It's actually either linear or it's going to have a drop in the top end response. And it's actually quite smooth and quite lovely. I mean, it's, it's a safe sounding top end is the way that I would put it. All right, let's try some upper mid range. With these tracks, we're gonna move into like electric guitars, stuff that's gonna be a little bit more aggressive. Um, upper mid range is one of those areas that I'm very sensitive to, and this is typically where we start dealing with speakers that are bright. Yeah, Randy, the awful B word, bright. Let's move on. That sounded nice, sounded smooth. Nothing edgy, nothing forward, nothing bright.
they're not bright loudspeakers. I can tell you that right now. Um, they're very balanced throughout the upper mid range. Normally that brass, that brass section that we're listening to, um, it can be a bit shouty. It can be a, a bit much on some loudspeakers, especially if there is a problem in upper mid range. And often that's where you're gonna see a problem. We either don't have, you know, a great phase relationship from the woofer to the tweeter. Um, maybe we have breakup modes of the woofer that hasn't been addressed on the crossover. And this typically leads to stored energy and stuff that sounds yikes. And with these, no, it sounds fine. Um, I wanna mention something. If you are hearing exaggerated mid bass and bass, Congratulations, your ears are working. And we're gonna talk about that when we get to mid bass and bass. We're gonna talk about speaker placement and some things that I've learned about these that you need to know if you decide to pull the trigger. Moving on. Right there, those little, I think it's um, some fret work or moving, you know, fingers on the on the string. You hear that kind of slidey sound. Um, that usually pops out on speakers that are bright, and it's like, ah, yikes, that was painful. And we're listening around 85 dB in room right now, so not too loud, but loud enough where if these were a bright loudspeaker, that would have been unpleasant, and it was not. It was actually just fine. sounded great no commentary needed I like that track a lot on these <laughs> I think I really appreciate the upper mid range on the Ravels. I think it's it's very balanced sounding. I have no complaints with what I'm hearing with upper mid range on these speakers. I actually like it quite a bit. Let's go ahead and move into mid range. <laughs> Last 
I mean, I've heard this track so many times on so many different speakers that, you know, you really start, you know, when you hear something consistently, and this is something that I appreciate about Randy, uh, Cheap Audio Man, is he always uses the same tracks over and over and over again. And I think that's a smart thing for a reviewer to do. Since I've heard this guy's voice on this track so many times, it's pretty easy to figure out where does that sit in the spectrum? Are we hearing a little bit of bloaty, kind of bloomy character like we heard in the Heresies in the lower part of his voice? Or does it actually sound a bit more lifted and a little bit cleaner? Yeah, with the Ravels, that's exactly what's happening. So, you know, Harmon International, um, they're not clowning around when it comes to Hey guys, should we, you know, add a little bit of bloom and resonance to the male vocals? No, <laughs> no, we shouldn't. And again, this is just a different way of skinning the audio file. Cat, you know, I laugh obviously because I'm just having fun here and I'm just keeping this lighthearted. But the truth is, there is no right or wrong. It's just different approaches and different ways of thinking when it comes to. What is the purest way to get from A to B? A is the recording that is going through our source and our amplification, and then B is the speakers. Have we successfully kept everything intact? And I think that is, um, I think that it's fair to say that is something that is very important to Harmon. And you know, Ravel is no exception. They want to keep things intact. They're not trying to add a particular flavor. Um, and I think that that's what I'm hearing. You know, without getting long-winded, I, I think that the mid-band is going to be very clean and neutral. Mel vocals will always sound the way that they should. Mark Knopfler will never sound like Barry White. He will sound like Mark Knopfler. And that's, I guess, what I'm, I'm trying to say here. I want to go out and face the cold, but it's a really good time for a monologue. Can't let this pass. I find it. say it uh, hopefully you guys can hear it as well Randy I hope you're doing a good job today um, mid-range on these sounds dead nuts neutral it sounds you know certainly not the most expressive sound and I'm not saying that as a dig it's important that you that I take a moment and explain what that means not expressive would mean there's nothing colorful or wow man that female vocal was just popping on that mix no it actually sounds polite safe well put together 
very refined, buttoned up, very clean. Everything that I'm hearing out of these Ravels is refined and quite smooth and easy to listen to. I'm never, I, I think you would have a hard time entering listening fatigue with these speakers. I really do feel that way. With the way that they're voiced right now, you know, maybe with the crappiest recordings on the planet, well, you know, it is what it is. And there's no speaker that's going to save you from that. But I would like to think that somebody that's going to drop $7,000 for a pair of loudspeakers probably knows, hey, you know what? Good sounding recordings sound good. Bad sounding recordings, not so much. And so if you give these guys a decent recording, they are going to reward you with a very pleasant, easy to listen to performance. Mid bass and bass. It's been tricky with these. They do pack a punch and Everything that I am about to say, Randy, make sure you let these guys know. Don't, don't mix up my words here. I have some bass issues in this room with these speakers, and I don't think it is the fault of the loudspeakers. It is actually the consequence it's the consequence of me being a knucklehead and insane about soundstage. I must pull speakers out into the room when I can because I want soundstage. I want a performance in the room. When I did that with these, it was weird because where I liked them the most in terms of soundstage, the consequence was that we have an elevation in bass starting around 100 hertz. Actually, let me grab this real quick and I'll throw this up on the screen. All right, so take a look at this measurement. This was measured yesterday in their exact spot and this was using Clio. Um, the graph that we're looking at is from 0 dB up to 100 dB. This is an in-room response, no gating whatsoever. And by the way, do not pay any attention to the top end. In-room response is very different than what we're going to see when I do a speaker measurement. In-room response and speaker measurements, two totally different things. There is a drop in the response, but as I've been talking about a drop in the response, I've been referring to what we're going to see in the speaker measurement, not in the in-room response. Top end always drops in room, so this is not something that I want you to be paying attention to right now. What I do want you to pay attention to is what we see from starting around 55 hertz up to about 150. Two big bumps, right? We got two mountains there. We got some molehills and it's not great, right? And this has been the consequence to getting these further out into the room. I spent about two hours yesterday moving these speakers around and I could never knock out those two peaks. It just seemed like they would shift and move a little bit, but what I'm saying is these bring some serious punch in this room with these frequencies. Your results will vary. I can promise you it's not the speaker's fault. It's the way the speaker is interacting with my room. I tried them up against the wall and I was able to get deeper extension, which is what I was hoping to get knowing that Harman has these rated into the 40s on paper. And I believe them. I'm not giving them any pushback. I believe that is probably true. But in my room, at best out here, I was getting you know 55 as you can see on the graph. When I got them slammed up against the wall, I was able to get all the way down to about 30, but it was a roller coaster ride. I want to show you something now that is maybe going to blow your mind. Take a look at this. How in the heck did I do that? Well, it's magic. Actually, it's not magic. It's called Dirac. 
You've been listening to these without Dirac enabled because I wanted you to hear how these speakers sound without Dirac. As we go through the rest of the sound clips, I'm going to play a couple of different tracks without Dirac and then Dirac enabled. The amplifier that we are using is the NAD M33 and I freaking love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It's great. It's expensive, and when I get to the review, I'm gonna have to kind of, you know, work through that. Well, okay, what are you getting when you drop 5,000 bucks, you know, with this amplifier? It is truly a Swiss Army knife. There is a ton of features built into that amplifier, and I would like to think that somebody that's about to drop $7,000 on the Revels would not bat an eye at dropping $5,000 for the amplifier that's gonna be behind the Revels, and I think the M33 is a fantastic choice. If not, for this reason alone. So how did I do this? I set up Dirac and I set up a curtain to 200 hertz. A curtain means that I only want you to address problems from 200 hertz and below. I don't want you to touch the top end. And when I did that, I knocked out those two nasty peaks, no problem. And what's cool about it is then you can set up curves and you can change this to essentially whatever the heck you want. If you feel like this is a bit too safe and you want a little bit more bass, heft and weight, you can do that and I will discuss that when we get to the M33 review. All right, I know that was a bit long-winded and it was a lot of information, but it's important information that you need to understand that in the event where you've been listening to these sound clips and you're like, Ron, that bass is bloated. Ron, that bass is bloated. Ron, that mid bass is just too much. You're right and your ears are working. Good job. Thank you for paying attention. But with things like Dirac, you can address those issues and make no mistake, the problems that we see in my room will be completely different than the problems that you might be dealing with in your room. All right, let's go ahead and move on. decent recording as well. Um, this is with Dirac disabled. So this is the exact same thing that we have been listening to as we've made our way through the sound clips with commentary. I'm now going to go ahead and enable Dirac. It's now enabled and we're going to play that exact same piece again. whether or not it's going to be subtle or wow a world of difference in the recording but I can tell you that in the room it's not so subtle what sounded pretty dang bloaty and um, there's some quick note changes in that track there's just a couple of quick real fast note changes that he does and it's easy to miss the first time around because What's happening is that first note is so, so elevated and so bloaty that that quick change is hard to make. It's like, oh, he changed notes right there. It's kind of hard to hear it. When you balance things out, those changes are now even. And so this note is going to be this loud and this note is going to be this loud. Not like before where this note is this loud and this note is this loud. 
So what have we learned about the Ravels? Well, what I think is this is a very safe sounding loudspeaker. It's very smooth. It's characteristics across the board is smooth, refined, quite polite. Bass and mid bass in terms of texture and tone I wish I had a bit more. Um, I feel so far as I've been making my way through a lot of tracks outside of the Epidemic tracks, the Epidemic soundtracks that I use for the sound clips with commentary, but as I've been listening to real world music, I have all the bass that I could ask for, especially if I'm using Dirac. So I don't feel like you need to rush out and get subs with these guys that's good news but i do wish i had a little bit more texture and tone and so hearing the detail in mid bass and bass that's not make believe that's not hokey pokey nonsense when you hear that and when you experience it and then you don't it it can be a bit jarring and you miss hearing that texture and tone in some of these speaker designs. And this is one of those designs. I felt the same way about the JBLs, the HDI 3600s. And they do have one thing in common, and that is aluminum dome drivers, you know, for bass. And it's a great material to use in terms of, you know, how stiff it is and. I can't complain about the output in bass. I just wish that I had a little bit more texture and tone when it comes to mid bass and bass with these. So those are my thoughts. Mid range and above, no complaints. You know, it's not the most expressive top end, that's for darn sure. Um, we recently did some sound clips with commentary where we, we did a whole bunch of loudspeakers and you know, we were trying to determine which one makes a piano sound like a real piano. And with these, the piano sounded quite polite, in my opinion. It's just, it's there, but it is certainly, certainly more in the background. You know, it's just not prominent. It's not like there is a piano in the freaking room, Randy. No, it's just relaxed and polite. So... Those are my early thoughts on the Ravels, and we will get to the official review. I got to get these out and measure them and see what the heck is going on. I've already made up my mind on, you know, what I like about these and what they're actually doing. And I think that, I think we've done a good job of expressing that in the sound clips with commentary today. If you, if you want, folks, you can... Um, support us your patron if you'd like uh, we're gonna do a crowdfund of Randy because I don't have 8,000 bucks laying around to buy this thing but I do not want it to go home and it is a huge benefit to you guys and so I'll try to knock that out you know sooner rather than later because this guy needs to go home at the end of the month so anyways uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you like. Hit the little bell notification as well so you know when the next video drops. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.